so this is a, uh, a prototype of a, of a Motorola tablet um, that's, that's running Android. Um, and this isn't due out uh, for a while now, but um, obviously you can see from all the confidential uh, uh, stickers on the back that it's a, it's a prototype. Um, I'm gonna fire it up and, uh, and do a couple of quick, uh, quick demos. Um, so here we have a pretty simple unlock screen. I can uh, drag this thing there and I'm sitting in the middle of my chat that has video icons, which I should get rid of. There you go, well, proven. Um, <laughs> and uh, if we can get, I think we're in the right mode here. Um, I don't, I'm trying to get rid of reflection here. But anyway, I'm just gonna go into Google Maps, which I just have on my desktop here. Um, this particular, yeah, we're gonna need to do that shutter thing so we can actually see the screen. Yeah, can you do something where it's... I think there's some magical thing that they can do in the back there that lets I hope. me... Uh, I'm all washed out. Yeah, but you know what? On that screen, there we go. I can good. see it. There we go. Okay, well, that, there we go. I'm happy with that. Okay, good. Okay, cool. So here we have Google Maps. And this is the newest version of Google Maps. It's actually not quite out yet, um, but it's due out soon. And I have it, uh, I have it uh, on, in San Francisco. I just did a search and typed San Francisco. Um, so I can zoom in like you'd normally expect here. Um, and as I zoom in, you'll see now I have buildings. Oh, wow. Right, so we're taking advantage of the 3D processing power and I can scroll around here. You see the shadows change mm -hmm. as I move past the buildings and things like that. Um, and obviously because we're, we're talking about a 3D processor, this particular processor is NVIDIA. Um, they're dual core uh, a 3D processor. So these guys really know 3D uh, and have been great to work with. But I can just go Choo. and tilt here and get a, get a perspective. Ooh, you got an ooh out of me, that's and cool. Stuff like that. Um, and obviously I can do the, I can do the rotations. Uh, and, and move around and pan around. So Do you see again, through the windows? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other Google engineers. Talking about. That's right. So look, I mean, what, what we're showing off here is some, oh. some pretty cool performance, um, but uh, the, the special thing about this version of Google Maps, and again, about to launch, we're, you know, uh, how, how pretty close. When will it launch? So this will matter be available for cell phones in a matter of days. Days, um, okay. Yeah, so you'll, you'll hear more about it. Um, I'll let the team have that. We have a great team uh, led by Charles Mendez and Michael Saliski is doing <laughs> some great, great work there as well. Um, and, uh, and those guys are gonna make a great announcement. Um, but but you of, just did actually, but go ahead. <laughs> one, of the, one of the great things about this version of, uh, of Google Maps is remember it used to, to be just a bunch of tiles mm -hmm. that would load and you're not seeing yeah, yeah. that here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, those things. Right. I'm oh just yeah. Going and I'm you going keep going and, and yeah. you so don't this pull is off the end of this is actually vectors, and that's what enabled me to do these rotations. If this was tiles, I couldn't have 3D buildings that are being rotated and things like that. So this oh, wow. is a vector version of maps um, that uh, that downloads. How did you make it do that? What was the which one? The, make it like go sideways. Just two fingers down here. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, so, so the ability for these things to basically zoom in, and, and now we're talking about not a bunch of tile data, we're talking about just vectors. So if I wanted to, I could load like my entire route mm -hmm. when I'm navigating somewhere. It's a much smaller it. amount of data, much more efficient, and obviously much more manipulable. So if you're, if, if, you're, if you're in a car and you have it mounted and you're out of range or something, you could have low, uh, download you could load, the whole You thing. could load like a whole state into the amount of memory that you would normally expect one of these things. So, uh, a couple of things. The new Maps app that you've just shown us, uh, will that be Android only at first, or forever only Android? Well, this, this particular app was written for Android, right? So the engineers are, are focused on making a really good experience. And by the way, this app runs both on tablets, which are unannounced and unreleased, and as well as phones. Same app. Mm -hmm. Will it eventually run on uh, uh, your browser on your PC? Will it run on... I think, I think all the other people's operating systems. Yeah, I mean, I think those are all natural extensions. Mm -hmm. Again, you have a group of engineers and they only can do so much, so you gotta But to start, it'll run on Android phones. That's right. right. Okay, the tablet. Uh, what version of Android is that tablet? This is, right? this is obviously Honeycomb, which is, we just did gingerbread today, right? Mm -hmm. So this is an early version of Honeycomb. Uh, that's what the engineers are all, all working on right now. And uh, it'll be out sometime next is year. Is Honeycomb just uh, a version of Android that happens to work well on tablets, or is it a tablet version of Android? Well, we've done, I'm, it's, it's both, I would say. Um, you know, we've done a bunch of work on the user interface. This device has no buttons. There's no home button, there's no back button, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So I can go and take it and I can flip it this way, I can mm -hmm. flip it this way. The buttons don't get lost, right? It, like, the home button doesn't change when I go and flip it upside down. So it doesn't even matter you know, what I'm doing with the Well, there's only device. one on that iPad, but yes, I see what yeah, you mean. Still, yeah. You still get a little lost. Um, no, okay. 
There you go. Yeah, so you use these, right? Yep, yeah. so we have a little menu bar down there and it goes and disappears here. Let me, uh, let me drive it, are you gonna, no. what happens is you fall into these traps and then and Oh, really? Up. Yeah, because it it's, it's not done yet. I don't want it to blow up. Like Mission Impossible. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, so some of the work we did, like if I go to apps here and I go and select Gmail, um, I want to make sure that I have. Uh, uh -oh. oh, come on. I want to make sure <laughs> I have. This is, this is my uh, personal email, so I want to make sure I don't have uh, something <laughs> really bad here. Um, okay, so. What are you um, like, still waters run deep or something? <laughs> What's going on here? And here we do okay. have a, a little blow oh. up here. Let me just do that to, to set it straight. So, um, you know, so, so here we have email. And, um, and I'll, I'll just do this if you don't mind so you, everybody can see her. We can look at the monitor there. Um, but this is, you know, the same Gmail application, mm -hmm. but running in, you know, you have your, your inbox here, and then you have your message content there, right? Not so, unlike email on an iPad. Correct. So, so some, of the, some, of the, some of the enhancements that we made to Honeycomb mm -hmm. permit applications to basically, again, same application that runs on here will run on a phone. Right. right, but on a tablet, the application can express itself a different way. Right. So we added new APIs to Honeycomb, and then they will be available in phones. We call them fragments that allow an application to split its functionality to multiple views, multiple columns. And on a phone, those views will be one after the other. You'll get your inbox first. You'll click on something. And it'll slide through. away. Right. Like right? A, like a but on a tablet, they'll be side by side. And we let the developer express how they want those so laid you're out. Just showing that but isn't that now. essentially what Apple did? by putting some more APIs in for iPad development I, than they had for iPhone development. I think it's similar. I don't know exactly what APIs they have, but I think that we, the engineers, the architects in the system software team, the frameworks team, did a really, really good job of thinking about how to do backwards compatibility, how to have an app that runs great on a phone, run on a tablet, and how to have a tablet. So it just knows it's on a tablet. And, it and by the way, I mean, this, the same thing goes for Google TV, right? At, at developer I.O. We Can I ask you one more question about this? Yeah, of course. Before you put it away? I just yeah. um, how, this, is this the perfect expression of what you're, this is the one you designed with them, or is there just going to be 175 versions of this? <laughs> there, there, look, I mean, we're not in the business to build one tablet, right? right. We want everybody building tablets to adopt Android. So um, uh, this particular one is, you know, you take a new processor and, and uh, you know, you do bring up on that processor and you take a new screen and you get everything working for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in, you know, I've worked at companies and for companies where um, they generically try to do software, and this is the way Microsoft used to work with, with Windows, is they very generically build the next version of Windows and then, you know, expect it to work on all PCs. And in reality, what we do is we pick one of our partners, a semiconductor partner, an operator, and an OEM, combine them all together, and this is the device that all the engineers have on their desk when they come in the morning. So they all know the specific thing they have to focus on uh, for that day. And it makes a much tighter integration of hardware and software. And, and it's, if I had to kind of put that on a, on a continuum, I would say that Apple has done a, the perfect job of being an integrator of hardware and software. They're vertically integrated. And then Windows throws shrunk wrap software out there and lets Acer and Asus and everybody else build PCs out of it. Right. So we're sitting somewhere on that continuum closer to than Apple than, than Closer in, in Apple. Correct. Well, they have a, I was saying the other day, they have a supreme commander there. So are you the supreme commander of that? I, I would not claim to be a supreme commander of anything, and not even my, my dog. OK. Um, how much is that? How much is that? How much is this thing? Well, yeah. it's not out yet. So how much this thing's probably, like, literally, this thing's probably, like, $10,000. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>